Every year, 4 million New Yorkers assume the role of caregiver, either as a profession or just taking care of a loved one. But who is taking care of the caregiver? Yeah, the American Psychological Association says home health aides are at an increased risk for anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues. So joining us now to talk about this is Dr. Madeline Sterling. She's the assistant professor of medicine at Wild Cornell. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so you have done a wide range of studying these home health care workers. What can you tell us about a typical day for these individuals? Yeah, I'd say the key thing to know is that home health aides really do it all. Um, they are in the homes of older adults with chronic conditions, and they help patients with everything from personal care, bathing, dressing, getting around their home or the neighborhood, all the way to medical care. So reminding patients to take their medicine, helping take blood pressure, getting them to the doctor. So really critical aspects for maintaining health. Um, and I think a key thing to know is that they're often in the home more than any other medical professional. Mm -hmm. So when, when you look at the, who makes up this population of these home health aides, uh, who are these people? Who, you know, what, what did you find? Yeah, um, you know, our studies have found here in New York City and nationally that home health aides tend to be middle-aged women often women of color. Here in New York City, a high proportion are immigrants. This is often a first job um, into the healthcare system. And really, you know, hardworking, they're dedicated to providing high quality care. Uh, unfortunately, though, they do so at really dismal wages and sometimes pretty poor working conditions. So you've actually created a course to help home health aides take better care of themselves. What can you tell us about this course? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, before, uh, I'd say five years ago, we started noticing gaps in training uh, in terms of what home health aides knew about certain diseases. And so previously, we had focused on teaching home health aides skills in cardiovascular disease and care for those patients. I would say recently, our, our focus has shifted a bit. Um, we saw during COVID that this workforce has been on the front lines, providing care day in and day out. And unfortunately, we've seen that They've experienced a lot of stress, um, depression, uh, caregiver strain, and, and really just having trouble coping. And so we've now really, um, we're working on improving their own health. Um, we're working on uh, providing health coaching programs to make sure that they feel better on the job because I think we know um, that a better supported workforce leads to better care. You know, I want to go back to something you mentioned uh, previously. We talked about who this population is, uh, mostly middle-aged women in the New York City, a lot of uh, immigrants, first job, as you said, low wages, oftentimes uh, not good conditions. How do you fix this? Because this is hard work. This is, th th these are people that really need help, and ultimately these people that are giving so much of themselves aren't being compensated, aren't, you know, aren't getting the respect they deserve in some cases, are in terrible conditions. How do you fix that? Oh, you, you just hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think the, the first step is wages, wages, wages. I think we need to do a better job compensating this workforce. Um, this is not a low-skilled job, right? This is some of, you know, our, our loved ones' care is in their hands. And if we can't compensate workers well, then, then we as a society have a problem. So I think advocacy towards that is key. Um, my own work as a researcher, I'm hoping to advance the science behind showing their value. So, um, you know, we've been designing studies that can show, you know, does training the workforce better? Does providing career advancement opportunities? Do those things not only improve the conditions of the aides, but then the outcomes for the patients they're caring for? When you think of the age of these aides, I'm sure it can be physically grueling to kind of take care of someone. And sometimes they probably put their physical health in danger. So if a family out there is listening to this and they want to help their home health care aide, what can they do to improve that person's mental, but also their physical health? Yeah, I, I think partnership is key. Um, the first step is awareness. So if you have someone coming to your home and their job is to care for your loved one. Uh, make it make it as easy as possible. Um, go over what the go over what your values are, what the needs of of that loved one is. Let's go through those health conditions. See what it is that that you want that aid to do, and then come up with a plan together. I think also making sure the home is is safe and well equipped. Just as you said, sometimes injuries can happen. Um, and finally, knowing when to call help. I think you know I'm a primary care doctor, and um, we of course. There are instances where, where patients are sick in the home and they need to come to the hospital or the clinic. And so often the aide can be the first one to pick up on that and making sure that that aide feels empowered um, to ask for help when it's clinically appropriate. Mm. 
Dr. Sterling, a very important conversation that we're having right now, and I know it's a conversation that, that clearly needs to go beyond just the three of us right now. Uh, thank you so much, though, for spending some time with us today. Oh, thank you.